Why did Muhammad consider the ringing of bells as a satanic sign? After all, many of his alleged revelations were accompanied with the ringing of bells. Will you enlighten us, please? This question is pregnant with a lot of satanic implications that are, as we shall show to be obvious reasons, either deliberately ignored by the scholars of Muhammadan Islam or their logic escaped their intellect. Either way, we must, as always, turn our attention to the Muhammadan Muslim sources so as to gather some of the data on what pagans and even Muhammadans saw as signs associated with satanic activity. In fact, the Muhammadan literature provides criteria to know whether a person is possessed and or whether that individual is a sorcerer. We will then use these criteria to see whether Muhammad falls within the category of a person possessed or of a sorcerer. According to the oldest extant biography of Muhammad's life by Ibn Ishaq, subsequently edited by Ibn Hisham, the Meccan Arabs tried to come up with an opinion about Muhammad which they could then tell the other Arabs visiting the Kaaba. In doing so, they give us an idea of some of the signs that were typically associated with possession and sorcery. Alfred Guillaume's The Life of Muhammad, page 121. When the fair was due, a number of the Quraysh came to Al-Walid bin Al-Mughira, who was a man of some standing, and he addressed them in these words, You speak and I will listen. They said, He is a kahin. He said, By Allah, he is not that, for he has not the unintelligent murmuring and rhyme speech of the kahin. Then he is possessed, they said. No, he is not that, he said, for we have seen possessed ones. And here is no choking, spasmodic movements, and whispering. Then he is a poet, they said. No, he is no poet, for we know poetry in all its forms and meters. Then he is a sorcerer. No, we have seen sorcerers and their sorcery, and here is no spitting and no knots. Then what are we to say, O oh, Abu Abdul Shams? They asked. He replied, The nearest thing to the truth is your saying that he is a sorcerer who has brought a message by which he separates a man from his father, or from his brother, or from his wife, or from his family. Ibn Ishaq, in his Sirat Rasulullah, page 204, confirming the statements above, reports, When the people came together to plight their faith to the Apostle, Al-Abbas al-Ansari pointed out, O oh, men of Khazraj, do you realize to what you are committing yourselves in pledging your support to this man? It is to war against all and sundry. The above hadith is remarkable because it shows that even 1400 years ago, among the most ignorant and undereducated people, there were some who realized the enormity of the future consequences of following Muhammad's dictates. That Muhammad's message was and is so evil and demonic that it pitted men against women, sons against fathers, brothers and sisters against each other wives against husbands and utterly destroyed family and tribal loyalties manifest itself even after the lapse of 1400 years amongst his modern followers. This is exactly what Satan's message and purpose for humanity would have been. Sahih al-Bukhari hadith 1.2 and 4.438 narrated by Aisha. Al-Harith bin Hisham asked Allah Apostle, O oh Allah's Apostle, how is the divine inspiration revealed to you? Allah's Apostle replied, Sometimes it is revealed like the ringing of a bell. This form of inspiration is the hardest of all, and then this state passes off after I have grasped what is inspired. Sahih al-Bukhari 9.111, narrated by Aisha. The commencement of the divine inspiration to Allah's Apostle was in the form of good, righteous, true dreams in his sleep. The angel came to him in it and asked him to read. The Prophet replied, I do not know how to read. The Prophet added, The angel caught me forcefully and pressed me, so hard that I could not bear it anymore. He then released me and again asked me to read, and I replied, I do not know how to read. Thereupon he caught me for the third time and pressed me and then released me and said, Read in the name of your Lord, who has created, has created man from a clot. Then Allah's Apostle returned with the inspiration, his neck muscles twitching with terror, till he entered upon Khadija and said, Cover me, cover me. They covered him till his fear was over, and then he said to Khadija, O oh Khadija, what is wrong with me? 
Then he told her everything that happened and said, I fear that something may happen to me. And the divine inspiration was also paused for a while, and the Prophet became so sad, as we have heard that he intended several times to throw himself from the tops of high mountains, and every time he went up to the top of the mountain, in order to throw himself down, Gabriel would appear before him and say, O oh Muhammad, you are indeed Allah's apostle in truth. Whereupon his heart would become quiet, and he would come down and would return home. And whenever the period of the coming of the inspiration used to be long, he would do as before, but when he used to reach the top of the mountain, Gabriel would appear before him and say to him what he had said before. Believers and unbelievers, the above show that, contrary to what Aisha said, these dreams were anything but good. The Muhammadan traditions also speak out against the use of bells since they are allegedly the instruments of Satan. The traditions even say that angels will not attend those who carry bells. And what the Hadith 49.39, pulling off necklaces and bells from the necks of camels. Yahya related to me that Abu Bashir al-Ansari told him that the Messenger of Allah said, do not let a single string necklace or any necklace remain unbroken on the neck of a camel. Sunan Abu Dawood 4218 narrated by Umar ibn Khattab. Ibn Zubair told that a woman, client of theirs, took a Zubair's daughter to Umar ibn Khattab wearing bells on her legs. Umar cut them off and said that he had heard the Apostle of Allah say, there is a devil along with each bell. Sahih Muslim Hadith 5277 narrated by Abu Huraira. Allah Messenger said, angels do not accompany the travelers who have with them a dog, and the bell is the musical instrument of Satan. According to the Sahih Hadith, Blowing or making notes is a work of Satan. Sahih al-Bukhari 2.243 narrated by Abu Huraira. Allah's Apostle said, Satan put three notes at the back of the head of any of you in his sleep. On every note he reads and exhales the following words. Another possible indication of sorcery or magic is eloquent speech. Sahih al-Bukhari 7.62 narrated by Ibn Umar. Two men came from the East and delivered speeches, and the Prophet said, Some eloquent speech has the influence of magic, or speech is as effective as magic. Furthermore, Muhammad taught that bad and their evil dreams were from Satan. Sahih al-Bukhari 4.513 and 9.113, narrated by Abu Qatada. The Prophet said, A good dream is from Allah, and a bad or evil dream is from Satan. Sahih al-Bukhari 9.127 narrated by Abu Huraira. The Prophet said, I have been given the keys of eloquent speech and given victory with terror. According to the above data, the signs of possession, sorcery and satanic activity are 1. Choking, gasping, spasmodic movements, delirium and whispering. 2. Unintelligent murmuring and rhymed speech. 3 spitting and blowing and making knots. 4. Eloquent speech. 5. Bad and evil dreams. 6. The use of bells. Muhammad manifested almost all the signs of one who was possessed, since he often had spasmodic body movements and major changes in physical demeanor. He was also seen to be moving his lips, due to the so-called revelation being impressed upon his heart, which he tried to then memorize. After skimming through the Muhammadan Muslim data, we can now make some closing observations. Muhammad's religious experiences and practices mirror all the criteria establishing possession and sorcery. Let us carefully note the following. Did Muhammad experience some form of choking, gasping, spasmodic movements, delirium and whispering when the so-called revelations came to him? Yes. Did Muhammad use spitting and blowing? Yes. Did Muhammad claim eloquence, boasting to be the master of eloquent speech? Yes. Were Muhammad's dreams frightening and terrifying? Yes. Did these dreams cause Muhammad to fear that he was possessed, whereby he even contemplated suicide? Yes. Did the revelation sound as the ringing of bells? Yes. Did Muhammad and others associate bells with Satan? Yes. What makes this all the more amazing? is that the Qur'an cites the unbelievers as accusing Muhammad of being a man possessed and bewitched. I would like to point out the obvious, that these are the criteria from the Muhammadan Muslim sources. 
These are not criteria culled from the enemies of Muhammad. Muhammad meets many, if not all, of the criteria of being under demonic influences that are confirmed by the Islamic source texts.